When we think about conflict today, we often look around us to the struggle between nations on or near the ground. But to see the conflicts of tomorrow, we're going to need to zoom out a bit, as the science fiction of yesterday quickly starts to become the war zone of tomorrow. More than 60 years after the launch of the first man-made satellite, space is quickly becoming the new frontier for military competition and development. The modern world relies increasingly heavily on new arrays of satellites constantly being updated. From ordering a cab, having your food delivered, to finding your position in the desert, all rely on these new yet vulnerable satellites. But these essential features of our modern world have little or no defences, and major powers have been researching ways to sabotage or knock out their enemy satellites while protecting their own. And yes, space lasers are becoming a reality. This recognition of space as a new realm with brand new forms of conflict can be seen with the creation of the much ridiculed but increasingly significant United States Space Force. The US has begun developing intelligence gathering spacecraft like the X-37B. Unmanned and resembling a smaller version of the space shuttle, it's highly maneuverable and has been approaching the satellites of potential adversaries to collect useful data and even possibly damage them on occasion. The rush to protect and attack these systems is also connected to the development of a new incredibly powerful type of weapon, the hypersonic missile. Hypersonic means anything moving faster than five times the speed of sound. This isn't necessarily faster than existing missiles, but what makes them special is their ability to maneuver and alter their course after takeoff. No existing missile defense system, which today rely on missiles taking a predictable path, is ready in any way for this type of attack. If hypersonic missiles were in use today, they could penetrate any missile defense shield. But these weapons are still being developed and rely heavily on satellite communications to work. Hypersonic glide vehicles, which leave the Earth's atmosphere and plunge back into it, have to cope with temperatures rising to 2,200 degrees centigrade. For some perspective, titanium melts at 1,670 degrees. This intense heat builds a cloud of supercharged particles called plasma, which makes it very hard for normal radio communications to get through. The missiles are also designed to change course randomly and quickly put stress on the weapon, potentially tearing it apart. This means the infrastructure to communicate and control these weapons is not yet in place as nations scramble to protect and upgrade their assets up above. This new potential is moving us into an unprecedented era the US doctrine of prompt global strike aims to develop a system that can hit a target with precision conventional warhead anywhere in the world within one hour. Space Force will be responsible for integrating sensors, threat detection and deployment of these weapons. But hypersonic missiles will play the key role in making this a reality. And the United States is not the only country that has them. China and Russia have already crash-tested their hypersonic missiles and India, France and Japan are likely to have their own within the decade. That means we're entering an era in which many of the world's powers will have weapons that can bypass any of today's defences. The existing treaties between nations such as the Cold War era New Start are quickly becoming defunct and the arms race currently underway is giving rival nations hopes of one day prevailing over a superpower like the United States if they can only move fast enough.